Hello, friends, and welcome to the finale of Edge of the Empire Arc of Minoc Mysteries. I think I can speak for the whole cast when I say I've been counting down the days this week to conclude our first story arc with what we expect will be an epic battle. Uh, sorry, I just had an uh, echo in my cast because I had Twitch on, so I lost my spot, but I will get right back into it. <laughs> so if you didn't catch last week's episode, our party, true to their scoundrel nature, engaged in some epic betrayal leading to tonight's battle against a heavily cybernetically enhanced Feline. But before I get too far into tonight's story, let me introduce our wonderful cast. So I'm your host, Sylvanora, and I'm joined by our GM, or maybe more appropriately, our Emperor, throwing gauntlets, <laughs> um, our droid friend, Stark, our tech-savvy, Palomi, and our smooth-talking, game face, Killa. So, hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> hi. <laughs> So for those of you who might not have joined us on Minoc Mysteries before tonight, uh, tonight may be the finale of our Edge of the Empire arc of the Fantasy Flight Star Wars role-playing system, but it's definitely not the finale of Minoc Mysteries. We're actually just getting started. So next we plan to run short arcs in the Age of Rebellion setting and then the Force and Destiny setting. And then all of these story arcs will culminate culminate in a long-running game in one of those three systems. Uh, we will decide which setting to play with the help from you, hopefully, the viewers. So tonight's episode may be a little shorter, depending on what works best for the finale of the story, but rest assured, we'll use that extra time as a cast to get ready for a really exciting show for next week. So what we have planned for next week is character creation for our Age of Rebellion arc, as well as an overview of the rules. So we really hope you can join us next week because it would be really fun to have you guys as the viewers help us in generating the stories for our characters, and it will also be a great opportunity for us to review the rules again for any viewers who might not uh, have seen how we run the system previously. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's pull ourselves back a bit to tonight's epic conclusion of Edge of the Empire, and let's get into some character introductions for the last time with our beloved scoundrels. So starting with the infamous R323. Yep, I'm the astromech droid with a flamethrower and other things that should not be put in an astromech droid because Imperials decided so. Um... What did I do last week? I found you an overall in a locker. That was probably the most <laughs> civil thing I've done this whole campaign. You broke into a locker, yeah. I Finding clothes. Well, actually, I didn't even break in. I just went in. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, you had a stolen card. That's kind yeah, of. Yeah, we, we don't. But we don't need to talk about that. Huh. Yeah. No. We'll we'll just gloss over that. And I'm going to be. It's going to be either me or her, our dragon of Feline who's going to be blowing up tremendously at the end of the day. One of us is going to do that. <laughs> Someone will blow up. <laughs> yes. Someone will awesome. blow up. All right, why don't you go game phase, Killa? Uh, I'm playing Callum Logan. Uh, I'm an ex-bounty hunter, and now I'm sort of trying to lay low and stay off the radar. Uh, I've joined forces with the group in, in hopes of doing that, um, and the opposite has happened. Although <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't gotten in too much trouble. Uh, yeah. So we we almost uh, got Bosk to yeah. bring us the beat down, but we avoided it narrowly. Actually, with your help, so I did my best to make <laughs> yeah, a yeah. bounty hunter fight. But <laughs> and so we've been able to get ourselves out of situations, talk our way out. Sometimes we had to fight our way out. Uh, but I'm looking forward to uh, a nice payoff that will get our get the ship fixed up that we're all in, and uh, hopefully get us some more lucrative uh, stuff on the horizon. Yeah. Awesome. Go for it, Palami. Uh, yeah, I've been playing uh, Zanya Malore, the outlaw tech. I'm trying to think what happened for me last week. I It was definitely a pretty exciting week because I got to fangirl over a fellow techie, uh, and then I was uh, promptly ejected from said shop because oh, yeah. someone tripped a, he tripped he tripped a wire and was like, yo, these guys are shady. And so that was kind of hurtful. I was like, oh, I thought your friends were cool, but okay, I guess. <laughs> um, and yeah, mostly just kind of trying to not steal any more lightsabers, mostly. But, you succeeded. Uh, good job. Yeah, good. Although well, there were no lightsabers. To yeah, to be fair, <laughs> there really haven't been any lightsabers. And I'm pretty yeah. sure, like, the next lightsaber that comes along, I'll be like, I'm good. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> finding two that. lightsabers in the span of, like, 24 hours is probably... 
a very low <laughs> chance of happening, right? So. Sure, yeah. Yeah, we got spoiled. We were thinking we were just going to find him everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like we were candy. just like, look. Lightsabers. Look at all these lightsabers, guys, just for us. Well, it didn't happen, so. That's good. Right. <laughs> it's good. It's good, guys. It's good because then my kleptomania can be a little bit, you know, put at ease. So. <laughs> we like that. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, just hanging out, cool. trying to help people break into things. Huge. Which we're going to do some more of tonight. So, mm-hmm. absolutely. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> All right, and I'm playing Tetsu. Uh, she's a Zabrak hired gun enforcer. She really held true to her enforcer roots last week, using her brass knuckles to get some information out of some she's or shipping company workers that we tied up in a bathroom hotel area. Hotel and we bath. tried to flirt with that one time. Yeah, but... that was the week before. The flirting didn't go so well, so I got out my brass. The, the brass knuckles just got, <laughs> it was better. It's a little truer to form for Tetsu. Objectively better. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good lesson, actually, for everybody. Like, if you're at a noodle stand and an awkward Zabra tries to walk up to you and flirt with you, you need to leave immediately. Maybe Before just, like, bad. not hang out there anymore. It's like the start of a really bad joke. So a Zabrak walks up to a bar at a noodle shop. I mean, the scene was a really bad joke. So, I mean. <laughs> what? It was a really bad joke. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I just hope oh. we don't forget those guys in the bathroom. You know what? I we're going to forget those guys in the bathroom. The, like, Let's figure out. Or something to be like, if we're not back in a couple days, maybe let them out or things are going to start smelling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, what else did I do last week? I was also instrumental in the decision to betray Zare and Loki because, as always, credits are my bottom line. So, yeah, betrayal and brass knuckles, and that sounds like my character. Betrayal and brass knuckles sounds like a really great romance yeah. novel. What did I end up naming the episode last week? I think it was like Bathroom Betrayal or Brass Knuckle Betrayal, something along that something. line. <laughs> what, what kind of romance novels are you reading, Baloney? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to blame Stark on this one. He was the one who came up with the idea. <laughs> I had actually Sorry. thought of it. I don't know if you guys remember from a previous episode, we ran into a gang called the Triple Bs. And I was actually like going to call the episode Triple B 2.0, Brass Knuckles, Betrayal, and Bathrooms. But uh, I thought that was a little bit of a tough so You're forcing it now. Like it, it has See, to come I was forcing it, but... <laughs> a lot of bees <laughs> so with that why don't i turn things over to i'm gonna call him emperor tonight so turn things over to emperor throne gauntlet run our opening crawl and get right into our finale of edge of the empire all right i will run that opening crawl and then i'll do a little bit of explanation and reminder i guess so here we go Alright, we are back. So, the party is a group of scoundrels and rogues, and at no point was that clearer than last week, as you decided to potentially turn your back on the honest, hard-working Deveronian <laughs> who hired you. Mm-hmm. Totally honest and hard-working. That um, was very much... I yeah, that's very Hence the sarcasm like rolling off my mouth here. So Zarin Lokai, the Deveronian info chant, who was formerly part of Black Sun, had hired you to do a number of jobs, but ultimately the end goal here was overthrow the current leader of Black Sun, a Feline named Valerius Zarek, and he's also known by the nickname the Dragon of Feline. 
Um, you guys have found out some people don't think he can be killed, and you know a substantial part of his body has been reconstructed with cybernetics. Um, at last session, I believe Zanya realized that probably about half his body, uh, in some form yeah. or another, has been reconstructed. I remember um, that. And as a result, you guys are thinking about taking precautions to protect yourself against him and have set up the purchase, uh, a meeting for the purchase of some, some ion weaponry. The ion weapons actually will not damage uh, Zarek, but what it will do is, when he's hit with the blast, it will deactivate uh, his cybernetics uh, for a period of time. Um, so any bo bonuses he gets from those cybernetics uh, would be uh, like removed, and unless he has some sort of failsafe or backup that allows him to use the system anyways, um, like for example, uh, if the legs have like a backup generator or something like, he he will be in in a bad way as you try and fight him. So you've mm -hmm. arranged for the purchase through loci of some weapons. However, uh, you have also infiltrated the Black Sun base, which is kind of integrated with the Shizor transport systems office. Now the office, as you guys went through the hangar facilities, you found this strange looking ship which uh, Callum recognized as a Conqueror-class assault ship, um, which is a Seronian vessel, which is unique. They do they only exist... Like, the, each individual vessel is unique in its design, but it fits a general pattern called the Conqueror-class assault ship. And you guys met Guri, the uh, right hand of Prince Shizor, the leader of Black Sun, who has offered you a deal. Uh, she wants you to take out Zarek without her help, which will allow her to assess your suitability as future agents of Black Sun. Additionally, you offered her the incriminating evidence about Zarek as part of this deal, so she was able to look at that, and as a, she seems very interested in, in working with you as a result. Uh, but you have to do the deed and kill Zarek, because she wants to evaluate uh, your performance overall. Uh, additionally, she is willing to play along with you guys and get so that you guys can get paid by Loki. Um, so she's going to pay you, Loki's going to pay you, and future considerations with Black Sun. So if this deal goes the way you are planning, it's looking pretty good because you're yeah. gonna, you're going to get paid twice, and you have a, potentially a future employer, um, and that employer is also able to protect you from the Empire in some circumstances because of the close relationship between Black Sun and the Empire. So. Seems like a good deal. Now all that's left to do is really to do the deed, to defeat Zarek. Um, but also, uh, as part of the deal with Lokai, you said that you would plant data inside the Black Sun computer systems. Um, you haven't done that yet, and I don't know if you plan to actually at this point, because you are backstabbing Lokai anyways. But If we want to get paid, we'd probably have to prove it though, right? So we probably should plant it, but I think... Yeah. Part of our plan was to break into um, Zarek's office. So once you break in, you could probably just plant it through the computer system on there. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's potentially an option if you want to. If you guys want to go full, um, on, I, I guess I don't want to say full, fully honest, but um, if you guys want to actually do the job you're paid to do and get paid for it. <laughs> actually, um, fully <laughs> deceptive. We're trying to deceive as much as we can to get paid twice. Um. And you've throughout the uh, you've had a couple notable encounters, which I guess I'll mention just in case there are people uh, who haven't watched the rest of the series that want to see the finale here. Uh, the party has run into the bounty hunter known as Bosk a couple times. He is a Trandoshan bounty hunter, and you see him on the deck of the um, of the Star Destroyer Executor, like Vader's super Star Destroyer in Empire Strikes Back. He's one of the assembled bounty hunters that they hire to track down Han Solo, um, and obviously also uh, Leia as a result, and so he is a notorious bounty hunter, and this takes place after the events of Empire Strikes Back. The other uh, figure that you have met is apparently a fallen Jedi who uh, you encountered as you were trying to make your way to a droid that you were recovering for Loki, and your relationship with this person is very strange, because initially she tried to kill two of you with the Force, and then you managed to talk her down. She appeared to use a mind trick on Zanya. And then later, Zanya, after discovering a lightsaber, was able to bring that lightsaber back to this fallen Jedi um, to, after taking it from one of her uh, f comrades. 
So, Which I was not happy about. I'm going to keep saying it. I know. I, I, I don't want to bring up... <laughs> I don't want to bring up these issues, but it's, it's potentially open old wounds. Come on. <laughs> potentially important to the plot. Um, the other thing is that you guys have had very little uh, in encounters with the Imperials. Uh, you guys have mostly stayed away from them. They don't really operate in Port Town very openly, at least. And besides a bounty that appears to be for R three two three in the four and a half, um, a very, in fact, vague bounty. Um, there, there is little threat that you have experienced from the Imperials up to this point. Um, so I guess that's pretty much everything I want to cover before we get started. Uh, like Sylvanora said, we could run short today. We could run about normal length, depending on if some people get killed. Like, who knows, right? It's or if I decide to hunt down Bosk, you know, and get my revenge. Because, you know, I may be riding that high after we kill Zarek. I'll be like, I can totally take on Bosk. Which do you think is <laughs> yeah. more likely? That you will hunt the bounty hunter or that the bounty hunter will hunt you? <laughs> I need, like, that on some sort of, like, inspirational quote thing and put it on my wall. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag just bounty hunter things? Like, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's exactly it. Good call. <laughs> but that's pretty pretty much where we are. So Guri has told you that Zarek will be back at his office tonight at 11. Again, I didn't actually check if Bespin has a 24-hour day, but for the purposes of this game, we will say relatively uh, 11. And you guys have a few hours to make purchases of weapons or other preparations that you wish to make. Um, so you can do that now if you want. It's the third 11, I think. Yes. It's not AM or PM, it's the third one after that. I actually, I, now I have to check. <laughs> I it. I it Everyone's Googling it furiously. If anyone in chat knows what kind of clock Bespin has, <laughs> win the Nerd Award. Oh. I don't think. <laughs> well, Emperor are... Throwing Gauntlet looks that up. Why don't we talk about where we're are, going? Are we going to be allowed to stay in here until then, or. Uh, she's fine with that as long as you that. don't make too much noise. Right. So if you're if you want to just kind of like hang in the office, um, she doesn't in know if someone office. will go. In, yeah. So she doesn't know <laughs> if someone will go in the office though. Mm -hmm. So. I think what we had decided last week, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, is I was gonna go pick up the weapons. Um, yeah. The other weapons, and you guys were gonna try and break into Zarek's actual office because we're just kind of in like we were just in the waiting room before yeah so you're gonna try and break okay. in and plant the information on his computer or whatever is there a way to like mechanically set a weapon to where it will like bay the whole room in ion an ion field and knock him out completely and then before we and then we storm in afterward you could potentially build a device to project an ion field um so that's definitely a possibility um, you'd probably need at least a couple ion cells to do this, and some additional materials. Uh, I had I had never thought about this, but I think this is actually That's kind of a cool idea. That's an awesome idea. Here's the only here's the only potential hitch is that if you are doing this in his office, it will kill his computer. So you <laughs> probably don't want to do that. Like you might be able to set a trap for him outside the office or something. Um, but but if you if it's in the office, it's probably going to wreck his computer. And also, it none of you want to be near it. It would wreck me. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say. Yeah, it would wreck our 323. <laughs> yeah, so like, you guys, but you guys are all carrying technology As a last resort, too. then maybe. Like, if I get fried, then feel free. We I could put like it in the waiting room. It, yeah, I think doing it in the waiting room that he walks through to get to the office might be a good idea. I feel like that might be, like, a really cool cul culminating, like, thing for Zanya to do, too, is, like, create this awesome new tech thing. I don't think you've had great. a chance to really create new stuff, right? So yeah, cool. I've mostly been, like, slicing more than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really nice to actually outlaw tech it up. Um, That'd be cool. That'd so be maybe cool. when I go buy the ion weapons, I can ask if he has, like, a couple ion cells, too. Like, are Ooh. ion cells what power the ion weapons? Uh, I, I mean, like, basically... To, to, to sort of simplify the like purchasing of the weapons, he has a he, this merchant, this arms dealer, has enough to buy to sell you two ionization blasters, which are kind of like the guns that the Jawas use in Episode Four, like the short sort of almost shotgun like guns. Mm -hmm. uh, they look kind of like a flare gun almost. Um, and so he could sell you two of those, and Zanya's pretty sure that she could do this easily with two, with both of them. Yeah. Or she could, she could, it would be harder, but she could use only one 
and that way one of you would be able to carry the ionization, the other ionization blaster, in case her efforts fail, or he doesn't go into the field, or something else happens. Cool. I think we could probably get away with one, but why don't I buy the weapons first? Also, I looked up Bespin, and it's a 12-hour clock. Perfect. So nice. there's only one 11. There's only <laughs> one 11. <laughs> At least, I think that's what it means. It says rotation period, technically 12 my, hours. Technically, my 11 o'clock is, still works then, so <laughs> yeah. I, I'm vindicated. Right. With, like, a 12-hour clock, I feel like it's always daylight or something. There might not be a night. Who knows? Anyway, it also has 5,110 standard days in this hmm. year. In case anyone wanted to know. Yeah, well, that's, nice. how, that's, how take, that's how long it takes it to go around its sun. That, that's why, yeah. 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 Very long orbital period. Anyway, so she um, is she kind of in control of this uh, area, like this office space, and uh, well, she snapped a guy's neck, and the other guard left. So that's true. She, oh, yeah, she we maybe like throw the corpse off the the edge where her you, ship came you in. You can do that if you want. You can easily do that. And we could have her like make up some fake story, like we're doing maintenance, so we have to block it off and keep everybody out. Yeah, you could do. We that. also need to get into the office, plant the evidence. Uh, I need to stay in the office with the evidence, so both of us don't get ionized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. You yeah. need to stay far away from Zanya's workshop area. It's very true, and it would be a surprising place for you to come out of. Yeah, I was doing the maintenance. Boss, don't worry about it. <laughs> I put the latest firmware on your computer. <laughs> nice. Would he notice if he walked through the ionization field? Like, I'm just worried if he walks through it, and then he's like, oh, shit, it's a trap, and he, like, runs it's away. It's a trap. Uh, we could well, have a trigger in the middle of the room, right? It, like, wait, okay. like, or, like, even, or like, you could set it, set it with a switch, you know, if you wait for the moment, and then push the button, oh, and yeah. then, oof. He will, he will know the moment his his enhancements are ionized. No, there's no question about that. Um, but he uh, like you could set it on a switch. You could easily do that if you want. Um, you could ha- you could post a guard even so that he's like you know like there, somebody could hide outside and wait for him to go in, and then you could like call call the shot if you want to keep the door closed. Hey, I mean, it's up to you how you want to do that, but. Um, there's a couple issues, I guess, um, for Zanya. So, looking at this tech issue and trying to figure out how to solve this, uh, you have a couple of options, actually. Um, mm-hmm. You could create a more potent field that you think uh, would disable his uh, enhancements for, like, a longer period of time. But it, it's harder to activate properly. Or you could okay. use, you could create a more reliable system that's less potent. It would still disable his enhancements for a period of time, but it would be a shorter period of time. So you mm. might have to reactivate it during the fight, but it would be more stable than the other system that I talked about. Okay. So why don't I go get the weapons first? Can we get that out yeah. of the way? Yeah. 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 Let, yeah. Me, let me mull that over while you're getting those weapons. So I'm going to leave with one of the key cards and a pair of overalls so that I can get back in. Okay. And go meet him. Where, where was the rendezvous point again? He set up an area in uh, Port Town, in a, basically okay. a back alley. So. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have the credits with me, ready to pay for them, and hopefully this will be an easy exchange because I'm going alone. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, I'm on my way. So you show up to the meeting, and there's a shady looking. Um, like person with like a hood, like it all looks very shady, like very obviously shady. I'm used to it. It doesn't um, really need me. Okay. Um, and so this person is just waiting in the alley, just kind of like, you know, they're not doing anything really. They're just kind of lounging, you know, just kind of loitering here. And there's no, like, they're not doing anything. So, and they don't right. talk to you or anything. I'm just going to like walk up to them, like really non-threateningly as much as I can, being a giant Zabrak, um, and be like, Zarin sent me, I understand you have the goods we're looking for. Uh, the figure pulls back their hood, and you see that they are a Rodian. Um, so kind of the snout, like Greedo, you know, who gets fried in episode 4 by Han Solo. And uh, so he says to you in uh, basic, he says, 
I was told there would be more of you. Is this some kind of a setup? No, we just figured, you know, we didn't want to threaten you in any way. We figured this was a really simple transaction. I have the money that uh, Zarek said we should bring, and hopefully we can get this done as soon as possible. He looks at you, and he seems very suspicious of the fact that it's only you. Um, he said, uh, like, so you, your friends are, like, are they still here? Have they left? They're setting up for the job Zarek, or sorry, Zarin hired us to do. I guess Loki. Loki hired us to do. Um, and in order to be most effective in what he hired us to do, I've come alone. Okay, can you give me a, um, I don't know, a perception check, I guess? We set the difficulty here. I was afraid you were going to say charm, so perception is most welcome. <laughs> Let me know what I'm getting. Uh, I have okay, three greens, so that's too it. bad. Oh dear. I fail with advantage. Oof. So, I don't know what I was looking for, so I can't really adjudicate you what feel, this means. Uh, the guy seems pretty straight up and down, like he's just kind of confused because he's been told that uh, there would have been more of you, and now there aren't. Um, the one advantage you can use if you want to try and... Maybe you get a feel a little bit for what this guy is about, and you can use it if you want to try and make a negotiate check to talk the price of the weapons down, I guess. Okay. Yeah, can you uh, put up the dice screen, please, so that oh, people yes. can see that I failed with advantage? <laughs> that is the most amazing role to look at, but uh, just so everyone can keep up to date on what we're doing. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I ask him what the price is that he's asking for, and I ask to see the weapons. Uh, he tells you that the blasters are 350 credits apiece. Um, and he explains to you that the recent uh, Imperial garrison, as well as some a number of high-profile thefts from a gang called the Triple Bs, have limited supply, and as a result, he's forced to increase his prices a little bit above what uh, you might be used to for a weapon like this. Uh, he takes both the weapons out. Uh, they appear lightly used, uh, but in serviceable condition. Uh, one of them has the um, the name Grick carved into the barrel. Um, the other one looks like it was probably used as like a small, like a almost like a holdout weapon for a larger creature because there's like a an aftermarket grip for like really big hands on it. Uh, but otherwise, it, they both appear serviceable. All right. So I'm going to say that price is preposterous. We are doing this work for Zarian. He told us that the price was going to be no more than 500 credits for both of them. And that's all I have with me today. And there's absolutely no way that I can pay this price. And you do not want me to go back to Zarian and tell him that you were anything but cooperative because he is going to be more important on Bespin than you know. So you better abide by what he said. You guys promising the moon to everybody that knows Loki's <laughs> name. <laughs> He's gonna be dead soon too. I don't know. <laughs> they only <laughs> kill deliver to the people who might kill us. <laughs> be the most powerful person on Cloud City for about yeah. five minutes. <laughs> um, basically, I'm trying to coerce him, being like uh, using Zarin's name, like we've been doing a lot. <laughs> you want to yeah. coerce him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I get a boost die from that advantage previously, right? Sure. Yes. And so I also get an automatic advantage being a coercion check. So do you have the difficulty set? Yeah. Snaps. Triumph. Wow. Um, I feel like my triumph should cut it down to like 400 credits. Five credits. That's not how it works. <laughs> five credits. That is not how it works. <laughs> um, basically, can we say the triumph is that he is officially, you know, interested in the idea that Zarin is going to become more powerful and he doesn't want to upset him and he doesn't push back on the 500 credit price tag? I mean, it's only 250 I, credit difference. I'm going to give you something better than that. So okay. 500, okay. 500 credits, he's good for that. The triumph, The triumph is... 
you're pretty sure he already knew that Lokai is making this play. Oh, okay. He he is aware. Well, then why did he put me through those hoops? <laughs> why did he put you through what hoops? The hoops of like charging me more than they were worth. Um, I mean that's kind of separate from that. I guess so. I mean. What, how much money he wants for the blasters is not really connected to the fact that Lokai is going to be powerful soon. So. Okay. But yeah, you're pretty sure he knew. Like, he knows. And honestly, the the way he kind of gives in to this coercion sort of implies that he's very he's actually very comfortable. Like, you've, you've definitely convinced him, but he wasn't like... He wasn't as hard to convince as you would expect, basically. Awesome. All right, I give him the 500 credits. I'm going to be honorable now. <laughs> okay, he hands over the blasters, so... Awesome. One with the, the inscribed name on it, and one with the large hand aftermarket grip on it. Uh, I'm going to assume I brought some sort of, like, she's or transport company bag to put the weapons in, so it's <laughs> not like I'm carrying two ion weapons through the door. You have a branded duffel, yes. Yes, a branded duffel <laughs> <laughs> the best kind of duffel. <laughs> Are there really any other kind of duffels? I mean, you walk down the street and it's like Good Life Fitness or whatever. I don't know if you have that in the states, but Canada, you walk down the street, all the duffel bags say Good Life Fitness. Yeah, they're all definitely good. don't trust an unbranded duffel bag. I feel oh, like yeah. those are the types of things you see sitting on the ground and you turn the other way. That's where guns actually yep. are, so be careful. It's like when you come out of a bank, you've got to have the money sign bags. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> All right, I'm going to peace out then. I have my weapons. He has his money. I really don't want to linger. We got stuff to do. Yep. He seems very happy to see you go. I the same to him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so as as you depart, he... Uh, I don't know. What does he do? Maybe he decides to... He wanders backwards into the alley. Um, he seems maybe like he might be a little bit... Uh, apprehensive, I guess, and uh, just sort of takes off as he takes a drag from a death stick. You know, he's perhaps not the the most savory customer that you've ever met. Um, you need to go home and rethink your life. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Cut back to the people trying to break into the office. Yeah, so you guys are outside the office. You have this plan to maybe create an ion field and you're not in the office yet and there's a dead body of a guard on the ground. Pretty much. Okay. So no one do? ever got rid of the guard's dead body. Yeah, we, we need to get rid of that. Like, can we just throw it off the edge? Yeah. We throw it off All the right. edge. There you go. Bye, 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 dead guy. All right. We didn't need him anyway. Bye, bye, dead guy. <laughs> like yes. He was the children's book. <laughs> <laughs> so the um the lock on the door appears to be like a key card lock. You are guessing that your key card will not work, and you further surmise that perhaps attempting to use the key card on this lock would be a bad thing to do, because it might set off like warning signs inside the system. Well, I'm sure Zanya has her own key card that she can use. To I do. Well. So I will. Here's one I made earlier. Kablam! I I key card the thing that I need to key card. <laughs> Wait, um, where is this key card coming from? I think the she idea... made it between last week and this week. Yeah. Uh, oh no, uh, we, that didn't happen. Very... <laughs> <laughs> what? She can can she hack the card reader? I mean, yeah, sure, she could, she could I could, could definitely it, try. Sure. Can you maybe? Or, sorry, you slice, like, slice, slice. Alternatively, um, just open the door, like pull the handle down. Sort of. Yeah. I'm gonna first just do me the door, see if that works. Can you check you know. to make sure there's no like alarm that goes off before you oh, do snap. that? The kind of door this is is like um it's actually like a it looks like an aftermarket blast door that's been installed here to protect the office from exploding ships in the hangar, a surreptitiously included explosives and other ways one might kill a crime boss who has a great view of Bespin. Um, so you can't just 
jimmy the door open because it's like <laughs> it's like diagonal like blades that kind of create a blast door like <laughs> lattice that like locks in i feel like if i were buff enough maybe i could but i'm a, not buff enough if you so. had a lightsaber you could definitely get through this door oh, but ouch, uh, i don't know where gonna... you'd find one of those so nah. uh, <laughs> gonna, gonna cut that one even deeper every time <laughs> <laughs> all right um i will do a computer's check then so you're saying I don't have the key card. I'm pretty sure we have a key card. You have a key card. It is an employee key card, and you don't think it opens the office of the crime boss that owns this entire thing. That makes sense. Okay. Um, I'm going to see... Is the key card... So it's just like any sort of like RFID kind of key card where I wouldn't be able to like change any um, coding or anything in the card to give me access to stuff that I usually wouldn't get, right? Yeah, you don't um actually make a uh, make a computer's check like not to slice the like reader but just to like look at it and try and get a feel for what's going on here. Okay, cool. Uh are the is the uh, difficulty what's set? Here? Go for it. To ploop. Oh wow. Uh, okay. So you're looking at it and think that basically based on the interface here, it actually looks less like a a card reader because this it is a card reader in the strictest sense of the term, I guess is what I'm trying to say. However, it appears that the card is a probably a tag embedded in uh Derek. And it's unlikely that this is actually like a card. Like, like okay. he might have part of his armor or a cybernetic enhancement that he uses to swipe through and get access to this room. All right, then I'm just going to do uh, like a hard computer's check to see if I can just open the door using the pad on the door. So you want to just try and get it open? Like, yeah. With, slice it open? Okay. Yeah. I am definitely, definitely using one of these four dark side points. No. no question. It's a force sensitive door. <laughs> it is a force sensitive door. It can feel the power of the force. Um, Things you okay. don't want to see on roll 20. The GM uses a dark side point. <laughs> Thank you, Chad, for reminding us of our doom. Great. Good. Excellent. Uh, all right. I'm going to go ahead and roll. All right. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, so you the actual success part of that triumph is canceled. You actually don't succeed. No. You just have a triumph left. No. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you something. Okay. Yay. So you don't succeed at opening the door. You don't fail dramatically at opening the door. Um you are slicing into it and you realize very quickly that this is an intense security system. And okay. You, and you need to take precautions, and quickly you realize that you need to back out of slicing this thing if you want to not set off the security system. But as you are basically making your slicing escape, so to speak, yes. uh, you notice that there is a subroutine uh, inside this security system which uh, enables auto turrets to drop out into the waiting room and basically kill whoever's trying to force the door. And oh. that does not happen because of your triumph. That's interesting. <laughs> um, that's <can> helpful. <laughs> I, yeah, that's really cool. Can I... Can, can I you, you can I don't make know. another attempt if you want, but bear in mind that that is a thing that could happen. Okay. If you want, you can try and find where the auto turrets may come out of. Like, you guys can search the room, see if you can figure okay. it out. Um, yeah, I can. I can help do that. Well, yeah, can do that. let's do that. Will we just be rolling a perception check for that? Uh, yes, that's right. Okay. Is the difficulty set? Yeah, you're good to go. <laughs> I, I, I rolled a success and a threat. Gosh, guys. Um. <laughs> okay. And everybody else fails. Stealing turrets, man. Oh wait, were we want? doing this with our eyes open? Because. <laughs> <laughs> You tried to use the force, didn't you? That. Yeah. You tried to use the oh, force. Oh, wait. I mean, I, I think I might have something that might help. Um, 
because right. I'm working with people, so this is considered an assist. So pack instinct should give two. Well, I don't well, know. You're not assisting. You you made your own check to try. That's so true. You succeeded. You're right. You succeeded. So I did succeed. Um. So you actually note that uh, a, there's like a few plants in this room that are just in like pots, basically. Um, and it looks like the turrets are under them, and like so, what happens is the turret like flies up and ejects the plant into Aww. the room, which is kind of like it draws like people's eyes to what is happening that things are getting thrown into the room, and then you get shot by turrets. So you <laughs> you, you find two turrets in this room, um, like that are set into the ground. So uh, you're not sure, like like you could try and break them if you want. Um, or maybe, like, take welding equipment and try and weld something over it. Like, there are options here if you want to disable it. Yeah. Um, but it looks like, you know, you could try and mechanically disable them or, like, try and put something over Do them. Do we have <laughs> welding equipment handy at all? Uh, you don't, but you're inside a 10-level hangar. That's so true. So maybe we just some. go, just mosey on out, see if we can't find something. Okay. I mean, you need um, equipment anyways to put this field thing together if you are planning yeah. on doing so. Yeah, okay. Um, then I'll go outside, see if I can find like a nice full toolbox for mechanic stuff. Okay. Um, are you going to go on your own? Uh, I think I could use the help because we don't have much time. Yeah, I, I could go out and help search too. Cool. We actually know like when he's coming back. Like, Do we know how long we have to play with? Yeah, you guys, at this point... Um, it's going to take you about an hour to get to where you need to buy the guns and get back. You By the time you get back, you guys will have about uh, two hours to 90 minutes of preparation, depending on what you guys do. You have time. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so perception check to find that toolkit. Yeah, so where are you going? Are you just looking around this hangar, or are you going to go down to another level? Well, so this hangar seems like it's got mostly like elite ships that are parked in it, right? Yeah, there's currently only one ship parked in it. Yeah, um, and is ship. did I know of anything um, in the room where I found the overalls? Uh, there is no like equipment in there. That's like a dressing room primarily. Um, you, you can't use, you can't put like overalls on the turrets. Oh, I mean, you could try and put overalls on the turret if you oh, want. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not sure how they track targets, so that might work or it might not. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but yeah, that's an option. Um, if you want to find tools, like a good bet would probably be to go to a level that's more active than this one, uh, because both the one you guys came in on and this level are both like low sort of tonnage areas in the sense that there's not a lot of product moving through it so you guys could go to a level that's a little bit more populated but there might be like there's a higher chance that something goes wrong when you go to a level that has tons of people on it who might ask you a question or like ask, something bad might happen like it's out of your control really um, so you guys can search around on this level if you want or you can go to a level more likely to have equipment I think I want to go to a level more likely to have equipment Make sure your disguises are intact and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'm still wearing, like, the jumpsuit and stuff like that. Uh, can yeah. I'll okay. go with you to make sure we have the maintenance crew authenticity. Definitely. Oh, okay. yeah, and for those who don't remember, our 3 uh, two, three is painted like a she's or a it was it's honestly a friends. really fun girls night when we when we painted him so yeah. it was a fun <laughs> girls night it's like kind except of it like... was uh, Callum who painted me but yeah um, well we had fun watching Callum I guess I don't remember I think I helped Callum anyway yeah, yeah. I'm kind of one of yeah. the girls doesn't matter now. it's <laughs> fine <laughs> you are one of the girls you are an <laughs> girl so... all right welcome to the club so, All right, so we're going to go down to a level that's got more maintenance, like, I guess, equipment and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so why don't you make a computer check maybe to see if there's any information about some of the other levels to see if you can find an optimal level. Sure. Well, could... uh, one success, two advantages. Could another option be that she she could... Uh, what's her name? Jin? Sonia? No, the... Guri? the... Guri. Oh, Guri, yeah. yeah. 
Um, could we have her order the stuff up for us? Ooh. Oh, that's well, not a bad idea because she, I mean, technically wait. she runs. Well, no, we, uh, she said we need to do the job, so. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, feel you could her. I think, I think as independent of her as we can be, the better, because I'm going to go ahead and admit Zanya is a little bit uncomfortable about Guri. Okay. So I'm probably okay. not going to ask her for too much help. Mm. All right. Yeah, like it would definitely appear, make you appear less independent. But it's something yeah. you could do if you want. But it sounds like you guys have decided against that. So, Azania, yeah. you you get on a terminal and you start looking. And it looks like level seven has an active maintenance job going on right now. Okay. So there's likely to be equipment down there. It's pretty late in the evening, so you don't know how many people would be down there. Um, okay. If if any, but uh, you could go down there and check, and you're likely to have the equipment you need. Also, okay, additionally, cool. because it's an active maintenance thing, you think you could probably get the parts you need for this ion field you want to make. Sounds good. Um, let's go down to level 7, then. All right. Kablam. You guys go down to level 7, and there is a bulk freighter here. Um, nice. That is being... It, it appears it's being like almost completely retooled. Nice. Uh, like, like pieces of it. Old pieces of it are actually on the deck. Um, and there's there's no one here except a repair droid. Um, okay. And it's unclear why the droid is still working here. It may somebody may have forgotten to turn it off or tell it to do something else, and it's just working like it's not clear. Oh, um, oh! I'm gonna use Speaks Binary, and I'm gonna try and talk to the droid and figure out what he's doing here. Okay. Uh, this is like the second time I've been <laughs> able to use Speaks Binary. You're wearing a uniform. The right? first time didn't go over so well, if you remember correctly. That's true. You yeah. awakened a Minoc, but Ugh. fingers crossed things happen better this time. Uh, I don't think we're in any danger of having Minocs around. I think this is a pretty safe You just area. tempted the GM to bring out a Minoc. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> a swarm of Minocs. Okay, guys, we really got to work on security if there's a swarm of Minocs in a 10-level like hangar bay, basically. And yeah. yeah, they just get in through all the vents. Like, it's hard. It's hard to keep out Minocs. Like, you know. <laughs> so all right. you talk to this droid. The droid appears to be welding something. Um, there's It's basically affecting repairs on, a, on the section of the engine. So it's kind of towards you guys, um, towards your end of the hangar, and the ship is otherwise abandoned. This entire level appears to be abandoned. The droid is just doing its thing. Okay. Uh, hmm. So he's he. It just looks like he's probably like a skeleton crew still working on the ship. So it'll. It's not uh, clear. Like like the droid is just here, and everybody else has left. Okay. Does he have the same sort of markings that R three has? Yeah, I mean he's he's very obviously an okay. XTS droid. Okay. Cool. Um, I think I'm just gonna let him be. And then I'm going to uh, roll a perception check to see if I can find the tools I need. I'll assist. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Does, so does Pack Instinct work the opposite way where um, I'll get two boost die instead of the one? I think it only works if you are the one assisting. Well, I can search and you can assist them. Yeah, let's do that. Right, the difficulty is set for you. So I need two boost die or one boost die? Two boost die. Oh, that's that's three. That is definitely not two. All right. <laughs> nice. That, wow. <laughs> that is quite uh, the interesting. I used my boost die. That is quite a roll. Wow. I've, I've used my infiltration boost die. I feel to open the door to the locker room or something like that. Yeah, I did. So I can't use that here. Um. Wow. I don't even know what to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, what. You don't find any equipment, and there it looks like the droid has most of it piled near where it's working. So you would need to get near the droid in order to take it. Uh, um, can I just wheel over and look like I'm trying to help him? And maybe pinch some stuff? Okay. I feel like something cool needs to come out of that five advantage. No, I agree. Um, <laughs> trying to think. Kind of a weird check. Like maybe you stumble across something else. Oh, that'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, the third lightsaber of the show. No, no lightsabers. <laughs> no lightsabers. Maybe, uh, R3, maybe R3 stumbled across a multi-tool. I love multi-tools. But it's what I find. It's not what... <laughs> 
Uh, what do you want to find, Air 323? Yeah. You can hit me up. I'm not saying you um, can have it, but... Okay, so maybe there is something that the... in the droid's equipment that can disable the electronics of something temporarily. Yeah. Small time. Not not talking, let's disable Mr. Cyborg. Let's say, let's temporarily disable the panel on the door. Or turrets, maybe. Or turrets. Or me. Oh. <laughs> <it out>. <laughs> I, oh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, I think what I'll say is you find... Uh, in the gear, there is a, uh, a Felibrek droid disabler, um, and it looks like it's been modified for, um, use for, like, disabling, like, like, it's kind of like the lazy person's, uh, switch box, basically. Like, somebody's been using this thing and been like, oh, wow, this system's powered on. And it needs to be powered off pretty quickly. And they're using this <laughs> droid disabler to do it. Um, so, or And it's not clear that the droid was the one doing it. In fact, if I was a droid, I wouldn't use droid disablers against things. Because I feel like yeah. that's just kind of counter my nature. But uh, you find a fellow Breck do- droid disabler, which I will send you the link to. Sweet. Um, yeah. It's actually on that page. Well, I'll send it to you. Um, and it has two shots in it. Perfect. So you think that that could disable a panel uh, if used appropriately? <laughs> Keyword Have on you guys used appropriately? gotten through the panel on the office door yet? No. But that's what you're looking for the tools for, right? Yeah, yeah I think we're also looking for the tools so that I can just oh, in make one fell swoop, yeah, yeah, make okay. the thing and then also yeah. get through the panel. Let me know, by the way, when I come back, like when my hour of buying weapons is up. It's going to be by the time they finish this. Um... Okay, so you guys know the tools are near the droid. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, like, super casually just walk over and be like, yo, I need these for... Well, I'm not going to say anything to the droid. I'm just going to pick them up. You're just going to pick them up? Yeah. Okay. So you pick like, up, I own the place. You pick up the tools, and the droid turns to you, and he says, excuse me, I need these tools for maintenance processing. Um... I'm going to say in reply that I need to um, use these tools to help with an emergency job on Guri's ship. The droid looks, well, the droid doesn't have a face really, I guess, but (laughs) he seems insulted that he was not brought in on this. He does like the BB-8 like head tilt, like disappointed head tilt. He's like, I was not made aware of any emergency. I am the current maintenance unit assigned to these decks. Um, okay. Then I'll say it's because you're doing such a good job, champ. So keep at it while I take these out. (laughs) I can't be mean to droids. I can't do it. (laughs) Well, you're lying to a droid, so... (laughs) Are you Does sure? it already have a restraining bolt on it? Did she see that? Sorry? Does it already have a restraining bolt on it? It does have a restraining bolt. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, can I do this? Can I be like, hey, you, you actually have something on you, and just switch him off? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Wow. <laughs> That was the day that Zanya began hunting droids. Look, here's the deal. I'm not hunting first. him. I'm just letting him take a nap real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I'll. T- it'll be a mechanics check. Oh, um, that's no problem. <laughs> it, it's actually not that hard because this droid is not a security droid or a war droid. So, like, it's it functions to make sure that it doesn't get turned off or not well protected. Yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, um... Blam. Wow, you switched the droid off. Fantastic. <laughs> you singing a lullaby I'm, as you do it? I, I'm fairly certain this is like the least violent encounter we've had this entire game. It might be. Well, wait a second. I'm going to pull my gun out. <laughs> <laughs> no. For no reason. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> All right, um, oh, yeah, I'm but... going to take the toolbox back up to level 10. Does the droids have any loot? Oh. Look after the distant robot. Cards or 
The droid does not have any E cards, but I mean, I, I suppose the droid himself could be loot because he is turned off. Okay, so I start walking away with the toolbox, and then I kind of look back at the droid. It's sad and I'm form, like, like hunch forward in its power down mode. I'm like, R3, can you take him with us? How big is he? Yeah. It's like standard humanoid size, so you'd have to drag him along the ground. Oh, no! <laughs> well, I mean, I mean I if you want to put him on, like, a cart or something, you guys could find, like, a grav, a small grav cart and put him on. Yeah, I'll just... Okay, let's him. do that, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So you and have a disabled yeah, Maybe you can reprogram this droid to uh, do something, like, stand in front of shots that Derek might oh. throw up. I have yeah. a good idea. What if you turn the droid into an ion bomb? Okay. And get it to That's explode. also a dro- uh, yeah. These are our... all very good ideas. So then we can have the droid. Droid rights are a thing. And And then he explodes or something. I'm going to go ahead. I, I kind of look at um, R3 admonishingly. I'm like, would you mind? Would you like it if I turned you into an ion bomb? Kind of is maybe um, <laughs> we don't know what's hidden behind that shell <laughs> let's, let's try this guy first and if you think that succeeds then i wouldn't say no <laughs> okay well they life. put in like a sacrifice subroutine in our 323 <laughs> i like it <laughs> these imperials know what they're doing oh man i mean if i get blown up at the start of this fight you may as well use my carcass for good it's true <laughs> That is, that's not, that's a valid point. We'll figure out what to do with the other droid in a little bit. Okay. Let's take these back up to level 10. Okay, so you bring the droid and the tools on a cart up to level 10, and it's abandoned, so you can start working if you want. And awesome. I can meet them there, I guess, yeah, now? Yeah, you get your show back up around this time. Cool. Aww. I gave Zanya the weapons. Nice. All right. I'm like, it would be really great if you could only use one of these, but if you need both, whatever we think is the most effective. Um, I'm going to weld the turrets shut first, and then I'm going to get started on the weapons. I think nice. that's a good idea. Okay. Um, um, I'm not going to make you make a check to weld the turrets shut because I'm assuming you are capable of operating. <laughs> like, a makes welder. sense. You know how to use a welder? <laughs> I'm pretty familiar but with that. Yeah. <laughs> you got the hard part out of the way, which was. Oh no! You rolled a fail. You rolled last week. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can just weld it. That's fine. Okay. Um, so once those are welded, I'm going to attempt to uh, what you call it. What do you, what you call it? What was I going to do? Oh, you were going uh, to reprogram the droid into an ion thing. An ion bomb, I really yeah. don't think that's what I was going to do, but that's a good try. <laughs> or you were going to try and do something to the panel on the door. Um, yeah, that's right. I was going to try another computer's check to open the door using the panel. Okay. Um, that's that's fine if you want to give it another shot. I'm going uh, to also ready this droid disabler thingamajigger in case another turret shows well, pops up. The other thing we have to worry about is that not only do the turrets come out, but there's an alarm, right, that gets tripped. Is there? So I thought... Yeah, I, I thought mean, it was just it, it's, reason, it's reasonable to expect there would be some kind of alarm. Okay. It's not clear oh, okay. if it's a silent alarm or not. So should we wait until we've got the ion thing, the ion bomb set up? Oh, I see what you're saying. So maybe do the um, opening the door and closing it again last minute. Because mm-hmm. the because the thing is, if we can, it, we don't necessarily need to get in the office with him still alive right away. We could mm-hmm. get into it after. Okay. But, the it depends where we're putting the like different. blowy up ion thing though, because we don't want our. I don't want to be right. there. Well, okay. I also have to make a decision on if we want this thing to be potent enough to make it, disable his um, cybernetics for a long period of time, or fast enough to so we could like use it more than once or twice. Um. So I, mean, I guess what's our strategy going into this thing? We're so we are going to wait for him in. The waiting room is my understanding, and then kind mm-hmm. of jump him there. Except not the robots, but yes, but everybody okay. else, yeah. Okay, cool. You mm-hmm. guys also have a grab, like this grab cart. So if you turned the droid into a bomb, put the it's droid on the push cart, it. and then push it into him. Also- is there a way I could turn the droid into an EMF bomb using the? Uh, the the disabler thing that 
um, Stark found. I mean, you could turn the dro- like, if you turn the droid into a bomb, it's like building. It's like the droid's gonna get to like it, the, it, his memory banks be completely erased, and all of his components will be fried. That's Can she true. take out his memory banks before that? She That's could. true. And like, just take out his memory banks. You can install it in another shell that you make afterwards. That's it'll, true. It'll be rich from Black Sun, and just kind of use the shell as the. Ion Did we ball. end up keeping the uh, mouse droid? I no, he threw it against a wall and it broke. Oh no, you took oh, it. Oh, that's right. And, and I cried really for sad. seven days. Yeah, <laughs> we're still kind of in mourning. I'm still, I'm still wearing black, guys. Like this is hard. Okay. This is a hard time for me. The only okay. thing about taking out the droid's memory banks is it won't be able to function like as a droid. So like, there's no chance of it walking up to him and being like, "Sir, there's been an emergency explosion," because it has no memory bank. So like. It, you could you could use his body as a literal case for a bomb, but like yeah. the droid's not going to do anything. Like it's. I I think that's what I want to do, but I'm trying to okay. see if there's a way that I could use him and what uh, our three found to like not completely disable uh, the the cybernetics on the dragon of Feline, but um, to like I guess stun him or at least make him go haywire for a second. So. That he can't like immediately react when we attack him. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Without actually knowing the kinds of systems he has installed, it's really hard to know that. Like, don't I know his systems that. though? From you that have an shop? idea of like what percentage of his systems are, oh, but you don't okay. know exactly. So it's hard to say if a weapon would, because like against most cybernetics, uh, like ion damage or droid disabler, which also deals ion damage would shut down the cybernetics entirely and they okay. definitely lose the bonuses from those cybernetics but in some cases they'd also lose the use of the cybernetics completely okay. um, but until you see the cybernetics like you don't know really and it like you could definitely like if you want it to be like an ion blaster explodes and then a droid disabler explodes after that, that's po- that you could do that if you want to create like a two-stage bomb. If you have two shots to, to disable his stuff. But like mm-hmm. you're, you're not sure, without knowing the exact sort of layout of his cybernetics, it's, it's unclear if it will completely stop him in his tracks or just like remove all of his bonuses. Hmm. I have an idea. Um, can we do the following and let me know what y'all think of this what if the ion blasters were put on the droid so he's kind of like a trojan horse and is allowed into cheezor's um like private office and we use him to we use the blasters to disable him that way and then roll in i don't know that the droid would be able to effectively shoot the weapons that's true okay um, He's not really then, a combat droid, right? So if like, we're like, here, shoot these weapons, he might just go like, I don't know, Wild West gunshots. It, it has a one agility for sure. Yeah. It's, it's not built for combat. Not gonna... All right. Why okay. don't we com- contemplate how uh, cruel you want to be to droids while we take a quick break? <laughs> okay, cool. All right. We'll be right back. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> 